just like I did with the magnetic field due to a long wire. I want to make go over how to make this um, because this is really useful to make and to keep for your physics classes, for uh, to look around to try to describe the magnetic field due to a loop of wire. So I already did a video about how to calculate the magnetic field due to a loop of wire. Here's my loop, and there's my magnetic field. I kind of like it this way. I'll do two different ways. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna remake this. Okay, so but that's that's where we're going to go. If you're here to make that, that's where you're gonna go. Okay, so let's just uh, start with the code that I had from before. And let me actually switch over to the paper just to, to briefly make sure we're on the same page and how the original code works. And then we're gonna modify the original code to make that visualization. So this is a loop of current. And so the current's coming in and out of the paper right here. And I want to find the magnetic field at this point right there. I wanna find it for any point, right? We did it for the magnetic field on the axis of the ring, but we wanna do it for anywhere. So we have this uh, expression that we're going to use, the magnetic field due to a short little piece of wire. And so we can break this into a bunch of little pieces, but all the pieces have different directions for delta L. So that's the slightly difficult part. I will go over how that happens. Uh, so what I'm going to do is f pick an observation location. I can then find the location of each piece of wire and find the contribution of the magnetic field, go around the wire and get the total. And that's what we're going to do. So we have mu naught over four pi, that's our magnetic constant. I delta L is the vector length of the little piece. R is the vector from here to there, and then magnitude cubed, okay? Um, and that is the cross product. But cross product, can we, we can do that in WebV Python. So let's jump over to the code and take a little gander. We'll take a gander at this. So this is the code that I had before, link to that video down below. Uh, let's just go over the whole thing. So this is the magnetic constant, the radius of the circle, the current. Um, X is the location on the x-axis. I made the ring in the yz plane and then the, uh, the location on the x-axis. We're gonna move that around. So we're, I don't really care about that right now. Uh, X hat and d theta. So d theta is used to find the vector location and the vector direction of each little piece. Okay, uh, so I broke it into 10 pieces for my loop. That's 10 current pieces. And I'm gonna keep it at that because it worked pretty well. Uh, and then X hat is the direction, the axis of the ring. I do need that. DS is the length of each little piece. I need that to calculate IDL. And then that's just two pi R, the whole length of the ring divided by the total number of pieces. And then B is the magnetic field in order to add up the, the components of the magnetic field. So right here, what this RT does is it goes through and finds the location, the vector location of the piece. That's that I call it RQ normally when I write it down. That's RQ. Uh, and so that's just rotating around in 10 pieces, finding those locations. DL is the vector. And so here's a little trick. So it has a length DS, which I've already picked. And then to find the direction, I can use the cross product, right? So if I take the cross product between X hat and the position, I get a vector that's perpendicular to both those. That's in the direction of the circle. So that works. It's a little trick to work that out. Then I find the vector R. I calculate the magnetic field due to that piece. I add it to the total. And then I go back over and re keep repeating the whole thing. And I print it out. Yay. Okay. So what we want to do is to do this for a bunch of different locations. So that means it's going to make sense to make this a function. Okay. So we're going to make this into a function uh, where we calculate that stuff. Now, I'm actually going to, I want to keep the ring, but I don't want to redo the ring. So let's just keep this part right here while all that stuff, I don't even care about the B. Let's get rid of the B because I'm going to name my function B. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's just get rid of, we don't need that. Uh, the arrow, the spheres, that just, that's just going to make the, uh, the ring. Now down here, I'm going to define a function, uh, def b a little bit bigger that's better i like it nice and big like that okay uh so you can see it better right and i'm going to pass to it the vo the vector location where i want to find the magnetic field i'm going to call that rot so this is a weirder function right if you're into functions <clears throat> because i'm using some of the global stuff i'm using some of the that i'm using r and i'm i and all that stuff so i'm i'm gonna not put that in the function 
Now, just like before, I need to find a, temp, a, a vector to add to so I can sum them up. So I'm going to call that bt is the vector 0, 0, 0. That's, so when I go uh, find each contribution to the magnetic field, I can add it to that, and then I can return that. I, but I need to have something to start adding to. Um, and now I'm going to redo the theta thing. So I need to reset theta equals 0. Uh, I'm going to keep this. No, I'm, that's fine. No, I'm going to keep n the same. Yep. So now it's just going to look the same while uh, theta is less than 2 times pi. So that means go around the whole circle. I need to calculate that RT, which is the same. This is the same as before. I'm just going to copy that. It's the same. Except that needs to be dedented. That needs to be indented, indented. So I still calculate uh, RT. I calculate DL, but I don't draw anything. I'm not going to draw the arrows. I'm not going to draw the spheres. I can then calculate the magnetic field due to that piece. DB equals mu naught over 4 pi, which is KM times a cross, no, not the course, the cross product of DL, which I have right there. That's a whole DL. Oh, it should be I DL. Well, I was one. I times DL and R divided by the magnitude of R cubed. And then I'm going to add that to the total. Uh, BT equals BT plus DB. And that's it. And then I need to increase my theta. Theta equals theta plus d theta. And that will go around the whole loop. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to return the value bt. So I'll give it an observation location. It'll give me a magnetic field. And so we can do that down here. Um, let's give a value. Do I have a value for ro up here? Yeah, there's an ro. Let's just use that same value. We already did this before. So I'm just going to put this is now a function. So it's going to be RO. I'm going to pass it RO, and it should return the magnetic field. And then this is the theoretical. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so this should work. Really, all I did was I'm doing the observation location for one place. And there you go. So uh, this is 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth, 2.2 times 10 to the negative fifth, 0, 0. Okay, so all I did was functionize the thing. So now I can move around wherever I want and I can find uh, the magnetic field. I'm going to first make a loop around my loop, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, find the magnetic field in a circle around here. So I'm going to go around this and plot out the magnetic field. That's what I want to do. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to need another angle. So this is going to be after my make my function right there. Uh, I don't need this stuff anymore. So let's just comment that out. In Web v Python, you can comment on a, comment on a block that way. Um, okay. So let's say uh, the radius of my circle. Um, I'm going to call it R O is two times R. That's the radius of my circle that I want to plot the magnetic fields. Uh, I need uh, alpha right? I'm going to call alpha, I need another angle. Because I have an angle theta, I don't want to reuse that. So I'm going to call this one alpha is zero. And then uh, d alpha is going to be equal to two times pi divided by however many pieces I want in there. I'm going to go with uh, 16. Let's go 16 uh, magnetic fields. You can change that number. Uh, and then I'm going to need a scale, right? So my ring has a radius of, what is my ring radius? Uh, one centimeter, but my magnetic field was like 10 to the negative fifth. So let's just try BS is one times 10 to the third, because you know I'm drawing a magnetic field here. It's going to have a size, but the calculated value is 10 to the negative fifth. So it's going to you wouldn't show up. So I'm going to have to multiply it by some scaling factor so that I can see it. Now let's just do this uh, while alpha is less than 2 times pi. It looks just like their function, right? But we're going around in a bigger circle. And number one, I'm going to calculate the observation location. I'm going to call it RRO, just because I don't want to use that other thing. And it's going to be uh, vector RO times cosine theta. I'm going in the XY plane now. Uh, RO times sine theta, 0. So that's my vector. Now I can use that vector to uh, 
calculate the magnetic field and plot it. So I'm just gonna make an arrow. I'm gonna make an arrow, right? I'm not gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna say arrow, uh, POS is RRO. That's the location of it. Its axis is gonna be BS times B of RRO. So I'm gonna give it the function and it's gonna return the value of the magnetic field in that nice. And let's give it a color, color equals color dot yellow. And that's that. Now all I have to do is increase my value of alpha. Oops, what the heck happened? Alpha, I think I hit the, equals alpha plus D alpha. I should probably save this. And I will give you the code. You know I give you the code, right? You know I'm not gonna be like, oh, you're on your own now. No code for you. I'm giving you the code. I care, right? Okay, so let's run this to see if it works. No, something happened. He only did one. RRO equals, oh, that did theta. <laughs> Alpha. At least it didn't make an infinite loop. I just do things like that so you can see that this is live. I'm right, I'm not, I did do this before, but I still make mistakes. Okay, ooh, that doesn't look right. Huh. Oh, I, I passed it R-O. R-R-O. It moves the position, but it didn't change R-R-O. They're all the same. The axis is B-S times R-R-O, but R-R-O changed. Let's make the BS a little bit smaller. So let's say 2 times 10 to the 5th. Maybe it's okay. No, they're all in the same direction. That's not right. They all look the same magnitude. Okay. Arrow, POS, axis equals BS times B, RRO. But RRO is changing. Def, return BT. BT equals zero. That's working. Huh. This is weird. Return BT, alpha. I increase my alpha. Position, axis, color. Let's see. Here's what I had before. Okay, now you know it's live, right? Uh, let's just try this. Something changed. Huh. Oh, look, it's not centered on the thing either. Oh, I know why. Okay, well, let's just, let's just switch over to my other code. I know I did tell you I did this live, but... Okay, so this is the one that I have. Let me fix this because I did do something a little bit different. Let's put this at zero. And this is zero. We'll do it twice. Okay. So this should be the circle. Oh, no, that's not what I want. Uh, I need this at, uh, let's say, three times. Oh, my gosh. What the heck is wrong? Okay, let's do back the way I had it, R, and this one was R. I'll tell you what it means in just a second. If I get it to work, it was working just a second ago. I promise you it was. I showed you the code, right? Okay, that one works. So in this case, I start, I make an oscillation, a circle around this top point up here, uh, and then I do another one down there, so you can kind of see that it looks like a dipole, and it does look like a dipole. I don't know what's going on with this thing, and it was going up. It's really kind of weird. Um, but we can change the scale of this. One of the things I think I would like to do, I'm not going to do it because I've already messed things up. Uh, I'm going to give you this code, the one that works. 
uh, is to have these all have the same thickness of the arrows and it would kind of make it look a little bit better because the problem is that as you move further away the magnetic field decreases very rapidly and so you get these like you can't even see these vectors but if i increase the scale these are going to be too big so it's a kind of a mixed bag i only did this in the uh, x y plane you could do it all over the place but i think it gives you a good picture of what the magnetic field looks like in this case so i don't know exactly what my error is in that other code i'm going to give you this code that works uh and then hopefully that helps but visualize the magnetic field again save this code because if you need this for a lecture class you can pull it up it, just as the code and rotate it around and it helps students visualize what's going on and that's the most important thing right how do you visualize what this looks like it's kind of difficult okay there you go sorry for the mistake hope that helps i'll talk to you later